In this tutorial, I'll show you how to recreate this cool 3D layered paper effect within Inkscape. Be sure to import your reference images and have the color palette set up. You can download everything you need with the link in the description below. To begin our project, we're going to use the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle. Make sure to set the width to 800 and the length to 500 pixels. Switch the color picker tool by hitting D on the keyboard. Set this first rectangle to the darkest color all the way up to the left. Hit Ctrl D on the keyboard to duplicate the rectangle. Now bring the color picker over to the next square and select that color. Continue until you've reached the white square. Using the Bezier pen, draw a shape matching what I'm doing in the video, using only simple straight lines. Using the Edit Pass by Notes tool, select all the notes. Now up around the top, hit the button where it says to make all selected notes smooth. With the path still selected, hold shift and click on the rectangle. Hit Ctrl minus on the keyboard to cut out the shape in the rectangle. Repeat this exact process three more times. If your shapes have a stroke, select everything. While holding down shift, hit the X button in the left hand corner at the bottom. Set the opacity to about 50% for your reference images. This will make it easier to trace from them. Using the Bezier pen, trace out the fish, the diver, and the shark. Don't worry about perfection here, as these shapes will wind up pretty small within the image. Hit Ctrl D on the keyboard to duplicate your drawing, and now just drag it into place. You can use this technique to create a group of fish. Hit Ctrl plus to group everything together. For the diver, I decided to add an air tank to his back. To do this, I used the rectangle tool and I rounded the edges completely. Once you like the placement, select the diver and the air tank and hit Ctrl plus to combine them both together. Now it's time to move our objects into the scene. Make sure that they are on the top layer. Scale your drawings up or down by holding Ctrl on the keyboard and using the corner handle on the image. Once you're happy with size and placement, click on the image and click on the layer that you want the image to be a part of. Hit Ctrl plus on the keyboard to combine them together. Hit C on the keyboard to switch to the calligraphy tool. Make sure to copy the same tool settings that I have at the top of the page. Because of the settings above, when we draw a straight line, we get this squiggly shape that looks a lot like seaweed. To draw the seaweed, just use curved lines and create groups of three or four. Select 
enter a group and hit Control plus to group everything together. Now size and place the CV within the image, just as we did with the diver and the fish. Now using the bezier pen and the process that we used in the beginning, we will draw the coral pieces. No real strategy here, I'm just trying to draw something that's like a tiny tree using only straight lines. With your coral shape drawn, switch to the Edit Pass by Nodes tool and make sure to select all the nodes. Now go towards the top and hit the button Make Selected Nodes Smooth. Repeat this process for each piece of coral that you draw. Now place the coral throughout the scene. Resize the coral if needed and place within the scene. Just like we did before, select the coral, hold down control and select the layer that you want it to be on. Hit Control plus on the keyboard and combine them together. To add a little more interest to the scene, let's draw a boat anchor using only simple shapes. While holding Control, draw a perfect circle. Hit Control D on the keyboard to duplicate the circle and drag it up a little bit. While holding Shift, select both circles and hit Ctrl- on the keyboard to cut out your shape. Go to the Path tab at the menu at the top, select Object to Path. Hit N to change to the Edit Path by Nodes tool. Select only the bottom point and go up top to make a node a corner. A skinny rectangle on top of the other shape. With this selected, go to Path and then Object Path. While using the Edit Path by Nodes tool, select only the two top nodes. Now while holding down Shift, bring both of the nodes in together. Select both shapes and in the Align and Distribute tab, hit Align on Vertical Axis to make sure that they're perfectly centered. After that, hit Ctrl Plus to combine them together. Using the circle tool again, draw a small circle. With that circle selected, hit Ctrl D to duplicate it. With the second circle selected, hold Shift and Ctrl to make this circle smaller. Select both circles and hit Ctrl minus on the keyboard to cut out the shape. Make sure it's centered with the rest of the image and hit Ctrl plus to combine everything together. Draw a small rectangle and add a small circle at the end of it. Make sure that they're aligned with each other by selecting center on horizontal axis in the Align and Distribute tab.
Control D to duplicate the circle and bring it over to the other side. Select all the shapes and hit Control Plus to group everything together. Center on a vertical axis and then hit Control Plus. Using the polygon tool, make sure you have corners set to only three to draw a triangle. If you want the corners rounded, then input a number in the rounded field up at the top. Size it and rotate to fit the image. Hit Ctrl D to duplicate the triangle and then hit H to rotate it horizontally. Then drag it over in place on the other side. Select everything and hit Ctrl plus on the keyboard to complete your anchor. Now place it within the scene as we have with all the other drawings. Finally, we will add the 3D layered effect by using a drop shadow in the filter menu. Go to the filters menu at the top, select shadow and glows, and then select drop shadow. Make sure to check live preview in the open window. Select 56 for the shadow colors opacity. Set the blur radius to 10 pixels and leave everything else the same. Hit the apply button. Make sure to only click the button once as every time you click it you'll add another drop shadow. Make sure to have snapping enabled and draw a rectangle over the entire image. Remove the fill and select the entire image. From the Object tab at the top, go down and select Clip and then Set. This will remove the outer border that we don't want. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my website, thepixelproducer.com, for even more tutorials.